Section number 18 of Christmas and Christmas Lore. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Christmas and Christmas Lore by Thomas G. Crippen use of carols as to the manner of using the old carols no doubt it was for the most part domestic and just as certainly in the old days as in modern times they were sung in the streets on christmas eve or in the early morning not always in a spirit of pure devotion hone in his ancient mysteries page ninety quotes a curious stanza which by its spelling might seem to be of the fifteenth century unless indeed it is as we strongly suspect a clever modern imitation the lewid people then all gates agree and carol singin every christmas tide not with sham fastens bought john condal and holy bows a boat and all aside the brennan fur hem eaten and hem drink and laughin merrily and makin rout and poppy and danzin and hem reg niswinkle then no thing else twelve days they would not in the everyday book volume one page eight hundred he says these ditties which now exclusively enliven the industrious servant maid and the humble laborer gladden the festivity of royalty in ancient times henry the seventh in the third year of his reign fourteen eighty seven kept his christmas at greenwich on the twelfth night after high mass the king went to the hall and kept his estate at the table in the middle sat the dean and those of the king's chapel who immediately after the king's first course sung a carol as to whether carols were to any great extent substituted for the usual psalmody in church we are not very fully informed certainly herrick's carols were designed to be sung in the chapel royal at whitehall at exeter the various church choirs used to go about singing carols through the night and then mustered in the cathedral at seven in the morning where they joined in singing the old hundredth palm before the usual service davies gilbert writing in eighteen twenty two says that in the west of england down to the end of the eighteenth century on christmas eve it was customary in many houses to spend the time in carol singing from seven or eight in the evening till late into the night the intervals being devoted to the consumption of hot cakes and ale or cider then on christmas day these carols took the place of psalms in all the churches especially at afternoon service the whole congregation joining and at the end it was usual for the parish clerk to declare in a loud voice his wishes for a merry christmas and a happy new year to all the parishioners at many places in wales a service called pligan i e dawn was held at four or five o'clock in the morning sometimes the parson was escorted from his house to the church by young men with torches and the church was lighted with colored candles the character of the service varied in different places sometimes there was celebration of the holy communion sometimes the parson sang the first verse of a carol the clerk sang the second 
and then carols were sung round the church in procession in some places refreshment was provided in the shape of hot broth these services which might seem suggestive of a survival from the midnight mass of pre-reformation times are said to have generally died out in the episcopal church soon after the middle of the nineteenth century about the same time it is said plygain services began to be held in welsh nonconformist chapels but of late they seem to have been more usual on the morning of a new year footnote the welsh language has ample supply of carols hone mentions two volumes one containing sixty-six carols for christmas and five for summer the other containing forty christmas carols one for winter three for may nine for summer one to the nightingale and one to cupid and footnote much akin to the welsh plygain is the custom that prevails in norway there as in all scandinavian countries the usual type of religious thought is lutheran and the midnight mass is therefore not to be looked for but is replaced by a service called julat the regular time for family gatherings is christmas eve but in the morning before daybreak the whole parish assembles in the church for a service of praise which consists chiefly of singing rows of candles are arranged along the backs of the benches so that the church is brilliantly illuminated and as many norwegian parishes are of great extent it is no uncommon thing to take a journey of several miles to participate in the jalot in lapland the parishes are of still greater extent so that the journey to and from the church may occupy two or three days and it is said that the sleigh ride with its jingling bell is looked forward to by the children for months together this seems the most convenient place to mention what is reported from finland where every sailor and fisherman endeavors to spend his christmas at home accordingly all boats come into harbor on st thomas's day twenty first december and preparations for christmas begin on christmas eve every one takes a hot bath and the evening is spent in singing hymns and telling stories of adventure all rise before dawn and proceed to church the journey being often of many miles sometimes over a frozen arm of the sea lights are set in the church windows and a cross is placed over the door to show that there is christmas joy within special holiday fare is given to the cattle and a sheaf of corn is set upon the roof that the birds may keep festival a very curious custom obtained in several parishes in the isle of man people assemble in the church on christmas eve oil very i e mary's eve they called it each in turn sung a carol as a solo holding in his or her hand a lighted candle the carols were very lengthy but the singer had to stop if the candle went out the ceremony ended at midnight at crondell in hampshire until about eighteen sixty carols used to be sung from the top of the church tower a similar custom still survives in a few towns in germany and was formerly much more general luther's carol from heaven above i come to you is the one usually sung and the melody being led by a trumpet or cornet of late years a peasant custom has grown up in many places of church choirs or glee parties preambulating a village or district 
singing carols and collecting donations for some well understood charitable object this practice sure embodies the genuine spirit of christmas and deserves general imitation end of section 18 recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver bc